Hello, crypto fans, and have we got some crypto news for you. First of all, Cardano might be co copying Polkadot for the partner chains. I'm not really sure if it's really copying Polkadot side chains, but it sort of sounds like it, honestly. But that's fine, even if they're using Polkadot's SDK. Good for Polkadot, good for Cardano. So, it's the latest innovation from Cardano. Basically, um, Input Output IOG has introduced a new framework that will bolster innovations on the blockchain network. It's called a partner chain, much like the parachain, and was unveiled at the summit today in Dubai. The innovation is poised to revolutionize how new blockchains are launched in Web 3.0. So, the thing is, like, it's going to be modular. Um, it will improve security, liquidity, and reliability and it will be compatible with most blockchains. So I don't think their other interoperability thing that we're planning on really worked out, so they're going with this one. So Cardano has, been all, has always been at the forefront of tech innovations considering its layer one peers, known to outrank its peers when it uh, comes to GitHub commits. The introduction of partner chains underscores its commitment to stay on top of its game even as the year runs to an end. Very, very good. So, you know, I actually like this, you know, like, um, I think this will actually get more activity on Cardano. It, it will definitely improve its interoperability, which has been something that Cardano is indeed lacking. So this is a pretty good improvement. It's basically, um, the, it confirmed that its partner uh, chains will gain access to leverage uh, the probability scalable Cardano settlement layer while still bringing their innovations on board. Obviously, this pairs well with Midnight which was actually launched recently. And it will be the first to leverage the advances embedded in this innovation, and that will serve as a perfect complement. Of course, it is very good for scalability as well, with the Hydra head still one, one of the core innovations of the pursuit of scalability. Partner chains will serve as a more profound showcase of modular technology, the result of over four years of research by the IOG team, but they did definitely take a page from Polkadot as well. So very, very good news for Cardano. I still have high hopes for Cardano in the bull run. I'm looking at $5 to $10 for Cardano, and I'm definitely looking for a min swap to come up as well on that. Hopefully min swap can get to a couple of dollars. However, like for min swap, my main concern is the coin dilution. Only a small part of the min swap coins are actually out. So the tokenomics aren't very good, but the liquidity farming is still there for min swap. The other thing is I did hear that there was a new liquidity pool forming for VEX VET and it'll run for a couple of months. So if you're looking to reactivate that pair or if you're hoping for that to make a comeback, that might be able to actually make a comeback. So check on that. I'm not exactly sure what the details are. I'm going to be looking at that. Um, I'm basically just looking for VEX to really go up in price. Once I find a good ratio, I will actually just switch out the liquidity pool and get, uh, get it all into VET again. So there might be some hope for that VEX VET thing. I wouldn't put a lot of hope in it, and I definitely wouldn't put a lot of VChain into it, and I'm only hoping to get a part of my VChain now that I did put into it originally, but there is some hope that that will be revitalized. They might convert it into a new coin or something like that, and hopefully in the next bull run, it will go very, very high. But with liquidity pool rewards, they might actually be making a comeback with the VEX VET stuff. So that's pretty cool as well. Do Kwan might just destroy Gary Ginsler. What do I mean by that? I've been over this before, but I don't think people know the severity of this and why the SEC suddenly applied for a summary judgment on the Terra Luna case because they didn't want a full trial. And it's not because of the time constraints. It's because like Do Kwan's lawyers motioned for a dismissal. And they knew they were in danger of getting that case dismissed because it's been a year and a half and they don't have any evidence. Not exactly sure how they plan to win the summary judgment without any real evidence either. But we'll see how the SEC copes with this. Because the thing is, like, that was the argument from Do Kwan's lawyer that the SEC has failed to provide any evidence and they're just, they've been just holding their clients up in Montenegro for one month. Now, Do Kwan might not get off scot-free because even without this case in the United States, he's still being sued. Like, a Do Kwan is still being sued in uh South Korea, his home country. And um, I think he might have to go there for trial. But at least in the United States SEC lawsuit, which they sued him for, among other things, selling unregistered securities, that part, it looks like the SEC is in very big danger of losing. And like we said, when, uh, when uh, they were originally sued last year, I thought this would be an open and shut case. It'd be very easy to prove for the SEC 
because uh, like Terra Luna was like the lowest hanging fruit you can possibly find. It does not look that way. And it does not look like the SEC has any evidence that Do Kwan did anything wrong in regards to selling securities. And if they can't prove Do Kwan guilty, they can't prove anyone else guilty. So this could have a devastating effect on the SEC's ability to actually regulate or go after other coins. I believe if they lose the Terra Luna lawsuit, they are very, very likely to lose the Coinbase lawsuit, even though those are two different cases. These losses are piling up against them and judges are going to see that, oh, this coin's a security. Oh, that scam coin wasn't even a security. So why is everything else a security? And they're going to come to the conclusion that Coinbase will actually get their case tossed, which would be very, very devastating to the SEC. And of course, you know, like that's good for us. So that's why, once again, I'm on team Do Kwan for this. Because yeah, while he might have actually lost people a lot of money, I don't want the rest of the industry to actually go down. And this could be a decisive blow in the crypto industry's favor if Do Kwan can actually win against the SEC. And realistically, if you look at what Do Kwan did, at least in regards to the United States, all he did was really spring up a crappy project. Now, he knew the project was crappy, so you could actually get him for liability causes for that, of course. But the thing is, like, there was a flaw in the project, but he wasn't the one that exploited the flaw. It was SBF, and SBF was not part of Team Do Kwan. In fact, Do Kwan and SBF hate each other, and if they were put in a cell together, they would fight in mortal combat, in which Do Kwan would basically cut SBF's head off and hang it on a pike, most likely. Because, you know, we all know that Do Kwan is tougher than SBF. But anyways, like, this thing... Um, like if you really look at Do Kwan's thing, it's no wonder that the SEC is actually having a hard time actually fighting against him because like he honestly didn't commit any fraud. He basically uh, put up a crappy project. He knew there were some holes in it, but he was not the one exploiting the holes. It was Sam Bankman fried that took down everything along with himself. So I think the SEC is going to have a really, really hard time pinning Terra Luna as a security. And if they lose this case, they're going to lose the Coinbase case. They're going to lose the Binance case. And then they can't really harass crypto anymore. So I'm really rooting for Team Do Kwan because this could actually just like put crypto on a fast track to success and to the moon. And last of all, the Coinbase financial report shows optimism for the entire market. What do I mean by that? Things have definitely improved from last year. Now, Coinbase has actually gone up after hours trading because it started offering futures on Wednesday. But um, Coinbase stock, if you actually look at the financial report, it only lost one cent per share this year uh, in relation to losing about $2.43 per share last year. So much, much better this year. Total revenue jumped this year 14% to $674 million, ending a six-quarter streak of double-digit declines. Analysts polled by Factsheet expected Coinbase to report a loss of $0.55 cents per share on 10.4% revenue growth to $651 million. But the thing is, like, it did actually beat analyst expectations. So the market is actually climbing faster than analysts expect, which is very good for us. I mean, we could use a bull run as soon as possible. Transaction revenue, uh, tra total transaction revenue declined um, to 288.6 million, down from 327.1 million and 365 million a year ago. And uh, FactSet guided transaction revenue at 276 million dollars. So I think part of that is probably due to the fact that everyone basically moved their crypto off exchanges into their own custody wallets, but they didn't lose nearly as much money as they did last year. And the total revenue, which includes all their activities, did actually jump 14%. And I think a lot of that is having to do with, um, you know, crypto is just more being on the up and up now. And I do think people are getting more optimistic. I expect Coinbase to make great gains next year. They had subscription and service revenue was $334 million. So remember they introduced the Coinbase subscription model? That's actually making more than making up for the lost transaction revenue. And of course, um, total trading revenue fell to $76 billion in Q3, down from $92 billion in Q2 and uh, $159 billion a year ago. But that does not count October and beginning of November. I do believe it'll actually go back up. But overall, Coinbase is doing a lot better now than it did in the last quarter. A lot of subscriptions coming up, 
a lot of people more interested in crypto and more people probably coming into the cryptos market. And obviously, Coinbase launching futures, definitely a big hit. Now, for those of you that are wondering if Coinbase will actually lower their fees, they will probably not. They still need all their fees right now. But we're getting close to that point where the crypto market is actually going to be tipping and things are going to be on the up and up. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.